she's probably doing more to spread the idea that magic can be practiced using Harry Potter as a guidebook than I am with my Harry Potter website. <laughs> There's a good message at the core of these books, I said, insisting that the message is much stronger than the urge to pick up a wand and wave it around. But what about all the kids that come away feeling they do want to pick up a wand and have gone into witchcraft? They are in the extreme minority. But there are other factors there, including interaction from parents. Their parents have a responsibility to know what their kids are reading, and there's no responsibility for the books or scholastic or rolling. She says her name right, by the way. <laughs> Not to make sure they don't start practicing Wicca, I said. They are free to publish what they want within reason. No one's going to publish How to Murder 101. She crossed her arms. Do you know the books were turned down by non-publishers? A lot of books are. Oh. <laughs> it's common. She looked punctured. Is it okay to use witchcraft to fight evil, she asked. I don't think so, but, but that's what Harry does. But it's fictional. <laughs> it is not. It is sorcery. Her Bible is already open on the table and opens Revelations 21. I waved my hands to try and stop her. <laughs> the way it's practiced is fictional, I objected, but she was already reading aloud about the cowardly and unbelieving and abominable and murderers. I just want people to know my heart, she said. My heart is in the right place, and I love kids, I love them, I think they're righteous to God who loves them so much, and they're getting into witchcraft because of Harry Potter. What about their souls? I believe my and your reasoning is, is imperfect, I tell her. I believe all human reasoning is imperfect. It's not for me to say. The difference between us is that I'm not a missionary. You could be a missionary with your book. You could use it for good. <laughs> for good is a very loaded phrase, I said, nearly to myself, feeling almost weary at this point. I tried again. It's just such a shame, because I think if you could just read them the way I do, and get over the idea that they're spells and magic, you'd really love these books. They're, they're about being moral and honest and just and good. You can't fight evil with evil, she said, and her face went back to one perfectly polished finger pressed so hard against the, the tabletop it turned white. He is a wizard. Witchcraft is evil. And if you don't believe that, then that's your choice. You're allowed to believe that, but one day, everyone will know that witchcraft is evil. Her face was steady despite the hand on the countertop, still white when she had pressed the blood out of it. There was pride under her words, pride in something else I had been searching for the whole afternoon, a belief in her own righteousness. I'd never seen such stalwart righteousness up close like this before. It was the first time I met someone who had used the wall of faith to block every line of logical reasoning I could find. That hope that I had carefully constructed shattered and dispersed inside me. Laura was convinced that she had all the answers because she believed that God had already told them to her or would offer them whenever she asked. I envied her surety. Is everyone allowed to, protect, to practice any, any religion they want? I asked. Sure they are, but you don't have to indoctrinate our kids into witchcraft at school. So what would you say, I offered, sitting up further as I realized I'm onto something, if a wicked person came into school and said, such and such book is indoctrinating my child into Christianity and it's got to stop? She hesitated. What book? An imaginary book. Just say one existed. <laughs> I tried. Then they'd have a case just like the atheists have done. Would you support their attempts to get it off the shelves? That would depend on circumstances. That is just too raw of a question without having a specific book. I cast around for some obscure title to make my point. One of your books on your shelf at home, one of the Christian books you say your children read about the Bible, if they put those books on the shelves, she visibly pointed. What about the classroom? Harry Potter's in the classroom. In the classroom, fine. A wicked person objects. What would you say about that? They have a right to do that. America is a free country. They have their right to oppose it. Would I help them? No, I don't agree with Wicca. Witchcraft is an abomination to God. Then how, I asked, because I was truly confused. Can you ask the school system to support you in your wish to get the books off shelves if you won't support this wicked person? She doesn't answer. Do you follow me? I'm asking you, if, if you're asking support from our system, I know you want to pin me down. No, I want to understand, I'm trying to understand, how can you not say that this fictional working person, that your Christian books, should be taken out of the classroom? They've already done that. The Bible has been taken out. I pointed out that the Bible is actually a Christian text, an officially recognized one. No one has designated Harry Potter an actual, an, an actual instructional book of wizardry, except her and those who share her beliefs. She latched onto this, claiming the presence in the classroom and the teacher's recommendation says otherwise. They're being used as texts, she insisted. She repeated it to try and shake the reaction out of me, but I didn't bite. As reading texts, not as practice these spells texts, I said. She straightened up from her booth. Well, I would hope the teachers are not like that. <laughs> J.K. Rowling came in at number four on the list of authors of most challenged between 1990 and 2004, even though only five of her books, plus two textbooks, had been published. And at that point, she'd only been a published author for half that time. 
challenges to Harry Potter at that point, had only been coming in for five years, so she made up for quite a bit of lost time. Mainstays on the list have included fare that have been considered timeless near perfections. Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck has virtually set up camp on it. So have books by Maya Angelou for sexual content, racism, offensive language, and violence. As well as The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. The last series to make a continuous flash on the list was Harry's much-touted predecessors, The Goosebumps and Fear Street series by R.L. Stein. The first year in which Harry became the most challenged book, it took that title from Heather Has Two Mommies and Daddy's Roommate, two books that explain, <laughs> two books that explain homosexuality to children. I presented J.K. Rowling with this fact in her house in Edinburgh. She was in the middle of pulling the curtains, and before it was halfway out my mouth, she raised one hand in the air and said, well, there you go. Mostly, she seems bemused by the whole affair. She never expected her books to sell well enough to gain fame, never mind notoriety, or to gather an, ar an ardent following, never mind an active picket line. As soon as I brought up Laura Mallory, her face grew pensive and her chin tilted, like she was trying to figure something out. Has she read them yet? Somebody told me that J.K. Rowling would do something like that, make him into a 